So at, at a certain point, it becomes non-beneficial to you to devote all those resources to developing a certain application. So there's a cutoff point on the software stack that you can that you have to say that back back up to you guys. Absolutely right. No, and, and I think that's one of the challenges mm -hmm. is find is for us to find right. the sweet spot right. to, to find out what is it that we're really capable of doing right. well that we're capable of delivering in a timely fashion because some of this is the is the movement down of capabilities that existed previously at, right. at the system companies and they're asking us to take on some of that responsibility so I think this is where engaging with leading customers and having a, a, a truly um, uh, a deep uh, conversation about what is it that you're going to do and what is it that we can do and making sure that we're Much not kidding together, ourselves right? yeah. yeah making sure we're not kidding ourselves about okay we can take on that responsibility when in fact it might take us years to develop into a very very good machine that's, that's able to deliver that sort of stuff efficiently so mm -hmm. I, I, I think this is a a, a process that, that plays to our strengths and I believe differentiation will come in the form of our capability to integrate functions, our capability to get uh, IP across the broad range of uh, applications that right. we want to serve, right. which is a much larger company than many of our competitors, we're in a better position to do. And then also this development of software. I think I think the companies that, that like ourselves, that have such strength in processors, in controllers, DSPs, have, have a better basis for building the software capability than companies that have never been in those kinds of markets. Because you can serve many markets in the semiconductor industry without having a single software engineer in your entire company. Right, right. Possibly those right. companies yeah. are going to be very hard pressed to uh, to be competitive in this environment where customers say you need to provide them with a certain amount of that software. Right. I have two quick questions. One's on DSP. What's happening with StarCore? Uh, um, you know, this is this is uh, the DSP part of our business is uh, you know started out in the networking space as well as in the cellular space, mm -hmm. and um, if this is an area it, it continues to be a, a, a reasonable part of our portfolio. I'll be honest, Patrick, this is not an area that I have dug into very okay. deeply to see where it is we should be with that. Yeah, right, okay. Um, with the analog uh, area, um, the acquisition of Austin Intel raises the specter too of going more head to head with TI. And TI is building up its analog expertise uh, in the last year or two, really, and it's actually quite strong right now. Mm -hmm. So the question then becomes, do you see any, are you going head-to-head -head with TI in the analog space right now, and where do you see yourself differentiated? I, I don't see a head-to-head -head, uh, battle with Texas Instruments in the analog space. Um, we have been providing analog mixed signal sensors uh, into a number of different marketplaces for quite a number of years. So right. it's not a new um, yeah. phenomenon for us. Um, we, we're very solid in in uh, the automotive space, very solid in the industrial space, and now I would say we are going to build up some capabilities in the consumer space for the reasons mm -hmm. that we talked about a little bit right. earlier. But um, those are spaces where I wouldn't say TI, I would say anybody is dominant. Um, TI is a player, and your cells a player, linear technology is a player, and so forth. What we're going to do in the analog mixed signal power sensor arena um, uh, is to make sure that we are constantly looking at the markets that we can serve with our uh, processor families. And, and to the right. extent that these technologies are, are really quite powerful in differentiating mm -hmm. us in those marketplaces, those are good places to start. We might also provide components, because there are certain markets where to provide an analog component today is a good business. And it's pro it could be in, in businesses where we have customer relationships, although we don't expect integration to take place anytime soon, right. but we have the customer relationships. So I think there, there are a lot of these markets out there, LCD TVs and digital still cameras and MP3 players and navigation devices and so forth. I, I, so yeah. I think we've got an interesting play there. Well, ADI will say that they're the leader in high-speed data converters, and TI yes. will say that they've got the breadth of spectrum um, in, in terms of offerings all the way down the signal chain from DSP right through the mixed signal through analog, yes. right through the RF. Yes. Um, linear covers all the mixed signal linear space and maximum is just hard nosed good analog expertise. Yes. Where does Freescale's analog expertise lie? How would you say it separates itself from the, the pack in terms of analog? Well, I think the strongest, the strongest area for us 
uh, is in the automotive space. Mm -hmm. We have an incredible amount of capability in the in the automotive space, in our analog industry, in our analog business, and our sensor business. Both of them very powerful, okay, distinctly different than uh, than the capabilities of any of those other suppliers that you gave. What separates it in, uh, in context of automotive, what makes your analog technology better, say, than, say, Adiani's analog technology? I, I think uh, there's a couple of things. First of all, is this deep insight into what the customers need five years out. Okay. Right? I, I, I know from my previous experience how a, a, a classic analog company works, and the fact of the matter is it thinks in terms of what products are needed 18 months out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they really look at the long term, it's 24 months out. Okay? Okay. And so the automotive space demands that you be looking out f much farther into the future, developing capabilities today for those markets. So I think that we have system knowledge that is quite extensive, right? and we have the capability of marrying that technology with our embedded processor technology. And that, by and large, is not a strength of, of uh, uh, ADI, linear tech, maximum, intercell. And I would say, although TI um, has recently begun to talk about itself in the context of embedded processors, right. they're not really an embedded processor at the core. Mm -hmm. It's not to say they don't have DSPs, and it's not to say they don't have microcontrollers and so forth, but this has never been the center line of, uh, uh, of Texas Instruments. And so there are some markets in which they bring to the table processors, controllers, DSPs, and so forth. But we think this is who we are. We, right. we are at, at, uh, at our very heart a company that provides these, these uh, embedded processors and the, the relevant uh, analog sensor RF technology. I want to talk uh, quickly about the keynote tomorrow before we, before we uh, end up, but I want to ask you quickly, what's the, um, what, te what technologies really excite you right now? What areas of development uh, um, keep you up at night excited? Well, um, uh, it, to be candid, it's, it's really around uh, our leadership position in embedded processing. I, I really do think that this is giving us a very strong edge as customers are trying to, off, in so many different segments, trying to offload uh, some of, of their today's value added so they can move up the food chain, if you will, and continue to do more and more sophisticated things. So that's at the core of, um, of what I think Freescale is very good at. It's right in the line of where customers want uh, large companies like ourselves to be. And, uh, and I, I think as a result, this, uh, this is very exciting. And I think the multi-core platform right. that we're announcing today, the Core IQ, is very exciting. I think we've thought this thing carefully through. Uh, there is a great deal of, um, of uh, interest on the part of markets. I mean, obviously, the multi-core technology and architecture started in the computing space. Right. But now it is, in fact, the right architecture to drive uh, continuous improvement in, uh, uh, in performance in numerous other markets, namely, namely uh, uh, the, uh, the networking market. And I think what we're doing in this space is very exciting.